Hello, DASA families. It's Mr. Thompson and Mrs. Fox. We've taken a few minutes uh, to share some information with you, and we want to ask for some help from you uh, to keep this school year rolling along smoothly. We want to first thank everybody for the effort and the dedication you've had this year. Our kids have done a great job getting the year started in these unprecedented times, and we know it's because of all the hard work of you at home, uh, the families, and helping us take this year on. Uh, so again, we want to share some information with you and ask for your help on a few items. So the first item I want to address is our daily wellness checks. A couple weeks ago, I made a video and we posted it on our school website. Uh, we want to start scanning student ID badges when they come in in the morning. And when we scan their badges, it will come up on our computer screen whether or not uh, their wellness check has been done at home by a parent. It's gone a little bit more smoothly at the high school because the high school students usually do these checks on their cell phones using the Skyward app, and then they show the green check mark on the way in. Most of our students aren't capable of doing it on their own or they may not have a cell phone to carry into school. So we are asking parents to help support their children with this process. If you check out the video, it's still on our school, school's homepage at the bottom under the archive videos. Uh, Mrs. Huth, our PTO president, and I did a video about how you can do that on the Skyward app. If you're not uh, savvy with a cell phone or you don't have a smartphone, as long as you have a computer with internet connection, you can bring up the Skyward Parent Portal, which is how I do it at home each morning. And you can select your child. If you have more than one child, you select your child. And then it's automatically defaulted. There are two questions. The answers are defaulted to no. So all you have to do at the bottom is click Submit, unless your child has been exposed to someone with COVID-19. That's the second question for experiencing symptoms uh, similar to COVID-19 symptoms. That's question number one. And if you would check yes to either one of those and submit, you'll get uh, a red check mark that says to stay home. Uh, but if you just se select Submit and you'll get a green check mark, that means they're good to go. So when we scan them in the mornings, their ID badges, it'll come up that they've already done that. If they've not already done that, we have to slow our line down. And with cold weather quickly approaching, we're trying to get the line coming in off the bus, trying to get it going as quickly as we can, getting in the school building. Also, rainy mornings also pose a challenge. So we want to get the kids in as quickly as we can. So if we can get some more parents to support us with this important step at home, we can keep our lines moving quickly coming in in the mornings and avoid long waits to come in the building each morning. And that just helps our district with our mitigation efforts of making sure that we're doing our due diligence and keep everybody in our building safe. So please uh, help us out. And if you need more information, just check out the videos on our website. Also, there's another video from our technology director on the homepage at the bottom explaining the steps of, on the Skyward Parent Portal if you don't have the app that we talked about in the video I made with Mrs. Hoot. Thank you. Uh, so we've had a lot of changes, uh, obviously due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, looking back to last spring when everyone was home for distance learning and we had to work together to deliver report cards. Uh, we made the decision last year out of necessity uh, to distribute report cards digitally with our Skyward uh, student information system. Uh, as families, you did a tremendous job with that. Uh, here at school, we, we saw very few problems uh, in, in distributing those report cards digitally. Um, and still, as we try to mitigate COVID-19, uh, we, we want to minimize how much paper is passing from hand to hand. So we are going to continue to distribute those report cards digitally. And I say that now as we've now passed the midway point in the first grading period. Uh, so on Friday, November 13th, report cards will be available but again, you will access them via Skyward. If that poses a problem for you at home, uh, whether it be with technology access or um, just confusion on how to find the report cards in the system, please call us. We can help you there, uh, walk you through the, the process, or we can provide paper report cards for you if that's a need as well. Um, but everyone's done, the majority of everyone's done such a great job accessing them digitally. We will continue to make that our process, uh, but please reach out if you need any help. If there's anything we can do to help you with uh, accessing your child's report card. Next, I want to talk about our spirit 
week coming up. This Friday is the official kickoff for Red Ribbon Week, which begins this Friday and goes through next week. Uh, instead of wearing red shirts on Friday, we're actually putting another theme in this Friday. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and it is the Pink Out Day uh, that Mrs. Spiegel always spearheads here at our school with staff making charitable donations um, to the, to the um, Cancer Society, and the students uh, show their support uh, by getting all decked out in pink, and some people go above and beyond, but we do just want to make it a, an opportunity to come together and show our support for others that may be going through other difficult times other than surviving a pandemic. Um, so then the following week, we have a daily theme revolving around saying no to, to drugs and alcohol. On Monday, it's Socket to Drugs Day, and we want the kids and adults that work here at the school to wear some crazy socks. Next Tuesday, our theme is Reach for the Dreams, and it's Pajamas Day. That's a lot of people's favorite around here. Next Wednesday is Drugs Are Crazy, and we encourage everybody to wear their hair in a crazy hairstyle. And next Thursday will be Too Bright for Drugs Day, encouraging everyone to wear neon colors. And finally, we'll end the week with our Halloween parties. Uh, so we want to reach out to you about the Halloween parties. Obviously, among other things, we've had to change our routines uh, with some of the things that everybody looks forward to here at school. Uh, so we're going to have our classroom Halloween parties uh, on Friday the 30th. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to welcome volunteers in. We, we always look forward to seeing our families come in and uh, help out throwing some great Halloween parties in the classroom. As many of you already know, uh, that we, we can't have volunteers in right now. We're minimizing the traffic in and out of the building. Um, in addition, we're not going to be able to welcome uh, the, the treats that we love to receive as well that parents and families send in with the kids. Uh, so we've worked with, some, uh, with our PTO organization and they have stepped up, PTO will fund treat bags. They will pay for treat bags to be put together by our food service uh, workers here at school. That's going to minimize uh, touch points and, and where the food is coming from and how many people have touched it. Uh, and so every classroom is going to have treat bags distributed to the students. As parents and as families, if you'd like to support those efforts, uh, if you would you know, normally send a treat in, we're encouraging you to reach out to PTO to make monetary donations and, and your donation could help, uh, you know, offset the cost that they've spent uh, to, to provide treats through our food service. So again, unfortunately, we can't welcome volunteers in uh, for our Halloween parties. The kids will still have a great time. We'll still be able to provide treats for them through our food service uh, people. And uh, one more thing about Halloween, we encourage kids to continue to dress up. Uh, obviously, masks won't be a problem. Uh, we've been working on that as the year has gone on. Uh, but we encourage costumes to be ones that a student can either wear to school uh, without too many problems or that they can change into right in the classroom. Uh, we're not going to use the restrooms like we have in the past for all the kids to pour into to change into their costumes. So keep that in mind that a costume your child puts on uh, can be changed into without privacy. It'll happen in the classroom. Um, so that would be the costume uh, expectations. And as always, any Halloween costumes need to comply with our school uh, dress code. So make sure everything's okay on that front as well. So we're gonna still have a great time with our classroom Halloween parties. Unfortunately, we won't be able to welcome you, the family members into them this year. Another thing the PTO always does to encourage family involvement with their children around the season of fall is to help their children decorate a pumpkin. And Mrs. Bettencourt, our librarian, will be getting information out about how we're going to do the pumpkin decorating contest on Flipgrid. Uh, so you'll be seeing that information coming from Mrs. Bettencourt very soon. Uh, we thank our PTO for figuring out a way to adapt that fun activity and keep it going for our families. That's a nice opportunity for everybody to enjoy uh, time together at home. So we have other traditional events that we all look forward to besides the Halloween party and the pumpkin decorating contest coming up this fall, uh, beginning with Veterans Day. And we always have a Veterans Day program and parent-teacher conferences and Grandparents Day. And unfortunately, we're going to have to adapt all of these uh, programs, activities, as we have done with the Halloween party. So we'll be seeing some information coming home from your uh, children's teachers 
about what we're doing with those activities. Uh, our PTO would still like to put pictures in the yearbook this year of kids with their family members that are veterans. And they would also like to put pictures of kids that come to school here with their grandparents in for Grandparents Day. So we'll be getting information out to you on how to submit all of that information. Parent-teacher conferences, we've already sent a letter home uh, talking about that. Those are going to be encouraged to be done virtually through a Google Meet. If you've never done one of those before, Mrs. Bettencourt, our librarian, and Mrs. McBriar, our stream teacher, have put together a tutorial video that is on our website. So if you continue under the school news section, um, you can flip through for more, more uh, details, more stories. It's on the right-hand side of our website. Click for more stories, and you will be able to be directed to the letter about parent-teacher conferences, and then there's a link to Mrs. Bettencourt and Mrs. McBriar's video explaining how to do a Google Meet. If you're still not able to do it following those directions, please feel free to give your child's teacher a call or any of us here at the school, and we can help you. Um, you can also participate by phone if you're not able to do it with a video, um, meet with a phone or a computer internet device. Um, you can also call into the meeting. There's a phone number for a Google Meet. So we can help you participate successfully uh, because we know that we have to put together our ideas with parents' ideas to find solutions to sometimes problems that we're having. We have to all be a part of the conversation. So we highly encourage you to sign up for a time to meet virtually with your child's teacher. And hopefully you can do that with video so it can be face-to-face, -face, but we certainly understand uh, with some people's uh, technology at home or if you're at work and calling on your break, how you might not have that capability. So we'll work through that together. We just encourage you to participate in the best way that you can. So as a school family, we've overcome and taken on some, some uh, tremendous challenges together. And uh, we're really proud of the work everyone's done uh, and come together uh, to, to make a great start to a school year. So we have a challenge for you. And I think as families, um, you know, we, we've all had a lot of things that we've had to figure out working through this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it's disrupted a lot of our vacations over summer. It's disrupted our jobs uh, and everything in our daily lives. But I think what many of us have found that there are some really great things that perhaps we didn't take the time to think about uh, when times were different a year ago, uh, that now we, we've kind of come back to those basics and realize we can do some great things together as families um, while still you know, following the rules for COVID-19 mitigation. So the final challenge we have for you as families out there, uh, and this is a, a great thing that we've always uh, probably had an option to do in the fall, and it's a great thing to do this time of year, but build a campfire and share family stories around it. And that seems a little silly because some of you may do that every weekend, um, but we want to remind you of the challenge that you can take on together um, and that family tradition, uh, the storytelling and sharing of stories and learning about our family members, perhaps that your children haven't had an opportunity to meet in their lifetime. Uh, so build a fire, tell some stories around it, have a great time as a family. Um, and we appreciate everything you're doing here to help us at Destin McKinney Elementary School. So have a great one, everybody. Thank you. Enjoy those s'mores while you're telling stories. <laughs>